Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review today. I'm here to tell you all about the latest from Atavistia, The Winter Way, out May 29th as a self-release. This album has 7 tracks, 61 minutes in length, and this is the band's second full-length studio album. Above all things, this album proves that you don't need a sauna in order to create a magnificent record. If you're upset about Time 2 not seeing the light of day, or Winter Sun not releasing any new material, look no further, pick up this album, you're not going to regret it. This band started off as a solo project, now has merged into a full-on band, and to me this album is that next step and that evolution that the project, now band, has taken. I really feel like they've came together, this album feels a lot more robust, feels a lot more mature, feels a lot more organic. I really like the sound, I really like the atmosphere that it holds, and I really like the overall structure and playability that it has. The album starts off with an intro track from The Ancient Stones, which is an instrumental intro track, that really lays the groundwork. It, it, it rolls out the carpet for the listener to let you know exactly what you're gonna get as, found, as far as soundscape and atmosphere is concerned for this record. I also like the fact that this track then bleeds in into the following track, and this is something that you're gonna find quite a bit on this album, which is tracks bleeding from one into the other. Even when that is not present, the fluidity of the tracks is such, and the elements of the tracks are such, that really allows the songs to stay somewhat interconnected across all seven tracks. So this is an album that's very linear in the overall approach with the volatility happening underneath the waves, happening within the songs with all the dynamic changes that each individual song has. But at the surface, when you look at the full on album, when you look at the seven tracks, it really feels very concise, very linear, very straightforward, and almost with a very unique sound across all seven songs, which is not true when you look at them individually. Even the structure of each song is very different from track to track, but they're able to create the perfect soundscape to blend them all in, to, feel them, to make them feel all as one, even though these are very individual songs uh, and every single one of them has their own individual DNA. As far as guitars are concerned, I love the guitar work on this album because they really mixed a lot of different styles, a lot of different genres. You get a little bit of melodic death metal, you get epic metal, you get symphonic death metal, you, you, you get even prog, there's a lot of prog elements on this album. So there are a lot of changes as far as the overall guitar sound and guitar approach is concerned on this record. And you see those changes on the individual tracks, you see those merges of genres, those merges of style and approaches within songs, not just from track to track, but within songs, making the song extremely dynamic and volatile, changing directions constantly, really keeping the listener on their toes, really keeping the listener engaged in terms of what's happening in the songs as far as guitars are concerned. The drums, in my opinion, having a drummer on the band really changes things up. It changes the dynamic, it changes the sound, uh, it makes the sound a lot more organic, it makes the sound feel a lot, uh, a lot more cohesive. I love the drums on this record, I really feel like they were the perfect partner, not only to the way the guitars were bending to where the guitars were going because the drums kept a more steady stream all the way through, but they also allowed the vocals to go in different directions because you have the, the guitars going in, in all these different paths, the vocals are doing the same, you need something that kind of uh, corrals these two uh, moving objects together and keeps them central, keeps them unified, and to me the drums did that on this record. Vocals is the other element that I really need to address because I love the vocals on this record. I love the different styles, the different approaches, clean vocals, screaming vocals, harsh vocals, backing vocals, different vocal layers, uh, choirs, all of these different elements really engage the listener on a song by song basis. They really knew what the song needed. When the guitars changed, when the melody changed, when the atmosphere of the track changed, the vocals needed to change with it in order to continue to give the song the heartbeat that it has, in order to continue to elevate the lyrics and really bring the songs completely together. Not falling in love with one style versus the other, but rather under understanding the melody of the song or the atmosphere of the song, what does it call for? And not just look at it from the overall song perspective, look at it as a song as a book with different chapters. So look at each chapter of that song and look at it and see what does it need? What does this chapter really call for? What does this one uh, need in order to enhance the sound, in order to enhance the playability? So to me, all of these elements, as far as the vocals are concerned, were really well scattered throughout the record, throughout seven tracks, and really elevated the overall feel, uh, emotion of the album. This is an album that, in my opinion, does not sound like it's coming from a band from Vancouver. 
it just feels like th it's coming out of Scandinavia. It, it just has a very polished sound. It has a very aggressive sound, but at the same time, it has a very melodic sound. It mixes a lot of different elements. Like I said, it mixes a lot of different genres together. It combines them really well and then delivers them in a very professional manner. I was not expecting the album to be this cohesive, to be this polished, to be this well crafted. This is a magnificent album all around. It doesn't matter what element you look into, you're gonna find it that it's gonna be at, at the highest level possible. Even the mixing and mastering of this record is really well done. When you have an album with these many elements, with these many moving pieces, that is a key aspect of the record. You really need the sound to represent what is in there. You need the sound to represent all the different layers that the music has. And in my opinion, this album delivers across all fronts. There's not one thing that is lacking on this record. As far as songs are concerned, I want to start off with the Atavistic Forest atmospheric soundscape with some folky elements really create the song that alternates in styles and approaches as it moves along. It's very dynamic track. It doesn't stay steady. It doesn't stay within one front. It just really moves all over the place. It really combines three genres, in my opinion, to create a song that has multi-layers to it. And that allows it to be very dynamic and to go into very different places. The forest sounds that they added to this song is a great atmospheric element. It really plays off of the topic of the song, of the lyrics of the song, and in my opinion, it enhances the whole track, it enhances the listening experience. It almost creates a visual effect as far as the song is concerned. It has really powerful drums uh, matching the powerfulness that you get from the vocals. Those two are really intertwine as far as this song is concerned. When one dissipates a little bit more, the vocals dissipate a little bit more. When the drums become more intensive, the vocals become more intensive. It's a very powerful duo that really pushes this track forward. The use of clean vocals, in my opinion, does that. It adds that dip. It, it really removes a little bit of the intensity. It adds a little bit more melody. And then obviously when the track, like I said, when the drums become heavier, the harsh vocals coming in add to that. To me, this is a song that's really driven by those two elements and really gives a song this roller coaster ride, a really dynamic roller coaster ride from top to bottom, just moving in a lot of different directions with a lot of different layers with great overall soundscape, atmospheric soundscape that really encompasses the song and brings the lyrics to life. Next, Eternal Oceans. Powerful guitar driven song. In my opinion, this is really a song that's dictated by where the guitars go and where they are. The vocals provide the outlet to the song, but it's really driven by the guitars. With the backing, uh, the, the backing instrumental track, the instrumental soundscape on this song is one that really allows the song to have a perfect backdrop to everything else that it's happening. It allows the guitars to be driven, it allows the vocals to accompany the guitars to be the outlet, like I said, but that orchestration, that orchestration soundscape that the song has really gives the song a spinal cord. It really allows the listener to set itself within, within a specific visual aspect that the song has to offer to the listener. The vocals on this track come across very emotional. Perhaps one of the songs where you get a little bit more of emotion out of how the vocals come at you. Switching between harsh and clean vocals and even with the backing vocals, it really adds a sense of journey to the overall sound. You really feel like you're traveling through the ocean. You really feel like you're going up and down waves and, 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 and you really feel the rocking of the boat. And they do that, in my opinion, not only with the orchestration, with the soundscape elements, the atmospheric elements, but they also do that in the ever rotating or ever changing vocal approach that this song has to offer. A lot of different styles, narrator style, like clean vocals, harsh vocals, choir. There's a lot of different things happening vocally on this song. To me, really representing the perfectly that 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 movement of the ocean that movement of, of the waves i really like that it, it really adds something different very specific to the way this song is constructed the song dips at the midway point almost creating an internal interlude and i really like that interlude because it dips the song in the middle it breaks the song into two and then it allows the the, the listener to kind of come up for air catch their breath before going back into the journey that this song takes you on a very intense journey. So once that you go through that interlude, uh, before rising out of the shadows, you just feel the drums and the vocals start to lead the way. They're really your beacon, they're, you're, they're your lighthouse, they're really pointing you in the right direction. And then once you get out of that darkness, once you get out of that interlude, you're, you feel yourself more in a familiar place, in a familiar ground with familiar sounds around you. This is a song that unlike a coin has more than two sides. And that to me is the beauty of the structure of this track. Last but not least, Dawn of the Frozen Age. 
this was a very different track. I mean, all tracks are different, but more so from a structural perspective, more than a sound uh, or atmospheric aspect of the tracks. This one to me is different across all fields. It's different as far as the structure is concerned. It's different about uh, as far as the soundscape is concerned. It's different as far as the atmosphere is concerned. This to me felt like a, a more darker and somber song. It had hints, in my opinion, of almost symphonic black metal, a little bit of Demo Borgir influences on the sound of this track and how it's structured, how it's put together uh, and, and how it's delivered. Uh, it's a slower, it's a less driven song, definitely more atmospheric, more symphonic in nature and a lot of black metal influences in how it sounds. It's not the only influence in the track, there are some beacons of light that pop in into this song, uh, pushing the song away from the black metal, more into the melodic death metal or, or epic melodic metal, if you will. So it's a song that has uh, at least two different stages to it. But when you look at the full body of work, when you look at the full song, it's definitely a symphonic black metal inspired track that really sets itself apart. Like I said, not just from a structural perspective, but really from sound wise, there's no other song that has this same uh, signature, this sound signature to it that has this DNA. All right, guys, this is it. This is Atavistia with The Winter Way, once again, out May 29th as a self-release. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, you guys.